scientists, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Today, we return once again to that turbulent decade known as the 80s. A time when 10,000 megabytes was more than anyone would ever need. A time of advancing technology, of seemingly endless invention. A time, if you will, of weird science. Released in the summer of 1985, Weird Science is the tale of two teenage outcasts who accidentally create the perfect woman, along with a raft of misadventures. The film later spawned TV series, lasting 88 episodes, but we won't be looking at that today. So grab your white coats and your insano goggles as we demonstrate the methods of Weird Science. Meet Gary and Wyatt. Their lot in life is not a happy one. Yo, check us out! And yes, that is Robert Downey Jr. pantsing our heroes. Look, I know, but we all have to start somewhere. Watching a late movie one night, our protagonists have an idea. The great ray that first brought life. In you know, it's not a bad idea. What? Fifteen minutes of storm to any time. Making a girl. And so are two maniacs set to work. Needing more power, our Hollywood hackers borrow a local military mainframe. And for a body, our two maniacs hook up an electroded doll. By the way, why are we wearing bras on our heads? Ceremonial. Now don't tell me you've never worn a ceremonial bra on your head. Seriously? Not ever? I've been grossly misled about the nature of modern religion. But a storm is brewing. And a mysterious bolt of energy. Creates a living, breathing woman. She's alive. So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The answer to which is glaringly obvious to everyone. Godzilla Movie Marathon, of course! Hang on, what were you thinking? One slightly awkward shower later... If we're gonna have any kind of fun together, you guys had better loosen up. Our now trio hit the town. And the perfect woman chooses a name. That's a nice trick. A very nice trick indeed. And so, Gary... And Lisa mingle. See you guys in the emergency room, huh? <laughs> Which surprisingly goes well. Let me tell you my story, man. Last year. Yeah, I, I, I got nothing. I uh... look an ad break. Later, we meet Chet, Wyatt's brother, the prototypical military hard-ass. Um, and yes, that is Bill Paxton. He debuted in the late 70s, don't you know? And yes, Chet does get his comeuppance, and it is glorious, but it isn't just yet. He's an asshole. Look at his haircut. Anybody with a haircut like that, you know he's an asshole. After getting by him, Wyatt and Lisa share a sweeter moment. Ah, young love. It's really not my strong suit. Let's just move on. Our two maniacs have a cold awakening at the mall. Yeah, me either. Viewers are reminded that immature horseplay will often offend significant others. Take note! But then, the culprits catch sight of our heroine. And her chaperones. Lisa, come on, hon, we're running late. Honey. And so, Lisa prepares to throw a wild party at Wyatt's house. I'm gonna go and pick up Gary. Can't wait to meet his parents. Oh boy. 
I've seen that look before. No good can come of this. You know, your basic high school orgy type of thing. I mean, uh, I'm not talking candle wax on the nipples or... He's a good kid. He studies hard. You've got no complaints if it... He just got... Of course, after a standard mind wipe, Gary's folks are right as rain. Good procedure there, Miss Lisa. You'll make a fine agent yet. Thus begins a party that will go down in legend. And so our two maniacs retreat to the safety of the bathroom to plan strategy. I mean, all we ever do is sit around and talk about how great it would be if we went to parties, right? And, and now it's our party, and there are hundreds of people here having a great time, and we're in each other. But when two girls approach... Ladies! Hi! Hi. The pretenses are quickly dropped. So I didn't know you guys had so many friends. Yeah. yeah, neither did we. Neither did we. And all would be well. Until Max and Ian, the slurpy guys, decide they want a Lisa of their very own. So what's the deal with Lisa? Can... You know, can we borrow her? This had better work. This is just a blueprint, okay? Now look. Excuse me, Arthur. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. You had to be big shots, didn't you? Especially considering they forgot one important ingredient. We forgot to hook up the doll. You forgot to hook up the doll. <laughs> Which leads us to this important piece of safety advice. Always hook up your host doll to your magical dream girl maker. It's just common sense. Those guys really need some self-confidence. A challenge. And that challenge is delivered in the form of a mad biker gang. is Vernon Wells, alias Power Rangers Time Force's main villain, Rancic. Our boys are screwed now, or are they? The boys decline to intervene. Guys, you have uninvited guests. I think you better come out and ask them to leave. This is an excellent chance for you to prove your bravery and courage. Those are outdated concepts, all right? But their hand is forced. Wow. And worse, their deepest secrets revealed. Did you wear a bra on your head? <laughs> Come here! Now! Our now heroes finally reach their breaking point. We are gonna kick ass. Okay. And draw. We can stay and die. This kid. This kid. Put a gun in a world conqueror's face. Beat that, Linkara. Oh, wait. No, hang on. There was that whole thing with Lord Vice. And... Never mind. Let's just move on. Let's move. I can't believe it. You know, is everyone all right? I just want to know. Is it... Everyone's like this. Square gun, man. But come the next morning, there's the little matter of Big Brother Chet to deal with. Snowing in my room, god damn it! Of course, Lisa makes short work of him. Gary, you take the Ferrari. Quit screwing around! This isn't funny! I haven't done anything to you. No, but you've done plenty to your brother. What? Give me your word that you'll leave Wyatt and Gary alone and I'll change you back. Oh, all right. With her work done, Lisa removes herself from the equation. You guys found girlfriends, right? You're not hurt? Yeah, sure I'm hurt. But I wouldn't change it. And repairs the house, leaving no trace that she ever existed. Daddy had this crazy notion you guys might throw a party or do something nutty. <laughs> Not us. Not here. No, no way. way. <laughs> but who's that new gym coach? Okay. 
drop and give me 20. What a way to start your week. Anyway, that was weird science. But truthfully, I don't think I can put this one into the house of love. The basic premise, that two nerds can learn what it is to have a good time and fall in love, is nothing we haven't seen before. And Lisa can basically be seen as a fairy godmother, which is most likely the point, but it still doesn't hold for me. I found it hard going to watch this movie. The way that the protagonists are brutalised by the world in general, and Chet in particular, made me wince on more than one occasion, and a pre-aliens Bill Paxton is pitch perfect as a military school gun-obsessed big brother, which will ring true to many folks out there, if more in spirit than in memory. Overall, as a coming-of-age movie, it does largely succeed. After all, making successful teen movies is a weird science. So thanks for watching, and join me in two weeks for more fun and frolics. So long, folks.